I'm Debbie Godfrey. Welcome to the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. So we're going to continue the talk about spoiling. And when we spoil, each, every act of spoiling follows a certain pattern. The child will succeed in avoiding a necessary duty or action or getting away with something that they, they're going to interrupt the consistency or the structure in the home. And when they cry or whine or do what they do and it interrupts the structure, the requirements for the parents of keeping order, keeping consistency are increasingly violated. And one, one time doing it leads to another time, leads to another time. So for example, one time a child cries because he wants food between, between meals. So his mother picks him up and rocks him instead. Well, now he likes this. So when he should be laying quietly and getting rest. Instead, he starts crying because somebody's not there to rock him. And so now he's not getting the undisturbed sleep that he needs that's necessary for his growth and development. So when we spoil or when we interrupt the structure in service of their whining and their complaining, we're actually robbing them of the necessary skills to do what they need to do in order to grow in order to develop appropriately. Spoiling and pampering can assume thousands of different forms. And a child that grows up in an atmosphere in which the order that otherwise regulates human conduct is not in force, then they they become overindulged. They become very difficult to deal with. Look, Bumble knows you're exhausted by dating. All the, must not take yourself too seriously, and... 6-1 6-1 since that matters. And what do I even say other than, hey? <sighs> well, that's why they're introducing an all-new Bumble. With exciting features to make compatibility easier, starting the chat better, and dating safer. They've changed, so you don't have to. Download the new Bumble now. When the when our families, I'm kind of reading this out of the 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 book here, make, which is why some of the wording is, is so funny. When, when a child is beyond the jurisdiction of the laws that bind all other members of the family, and he's carefully wrapped in a protective layer of tenderness and affection, insulated against the necessity of justifying his existence by accomplishments of his own. So sympathy and indulgence shield him from all the unpleasant consequences of his actions continual help of overprotective parents relieves him of any exertion. He does not have to put up with inconveniences. The exaggerated anxiety of his parents keeps him well out of the way of anything that might involve danger and courage. As a baby, he's trundled about and rocked to sleep. When he's older, he'll be exempted from many essential tasks. He won't have to dress himself and wash himself or do his homework alone. He'll be catered to in every respect. His desires will be granted without regard to justification, and he will find it possible to get his own way, even in cases where the order of the family will be seriously upset. And this is where that, that we handicap our children. So he, in providing all those services to this child, they'll suffer when they have to figure out how to take care of things on their own, when they have to figure out how to give up their desires for other people. Like when they get into school situations, when they get into social situations for contrary to a parent's expectation, most spoiled children are not especially happy. So when we overindulge them like this, we feel like we're doing it because we're loving and we feel like they should appreciate it, but they don't because they're not learning to be strong. They're not learning to be resilient. They're not learning courage. They're not the, 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 the children aren't learning all the things that they need to learn in order to be socially adjusted kids. So when other kids accept rebuffs as a matter of course, these children will see that they're unfair and that life is out to get them. Their discontent, impatient, and joylessness will characterize their existence. So many spoiled children become awful to be around. And inwardly, They never feel that they're quite a match for life, and their lack of self-reliance often causes them to break down under the slightest responsibility or hardship. And this, again, to me, is one of of the most challenging parts of 
the uh, finding the balance between loving our children unconditionally and greatly and not spoiling them. So looking for areas where we might be robbing them of the ability to overcome obstacles, to overcome challenges. Keep working at that today because it's part of a very important part of your job. Have a, have a great day. Happy parenting. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Positive Parenting Pep Talks podcast. I assume you're here because you're getting something out of these daily pep talks. And wouldn't it be great if more parents could hear more about these ideas for their children? And you can help me in a great way by liking the episodes, by sharing them on your social media, and especially by providing a review on your platform of choice. So if you could do me a huge favor and do that, it would really help get this out to many, many, many more parents. And we can all help our children feel more seen, heard, and understood, which is my life's work, is to make sure that all children feel loved and appreciated and that we can discipline them without breaking their spirit. So I hope that you've enjoyed these podcasts and will continue to enjoy them. And I really appreciate any support you can give me here at Positive Parenting Pep Talks. Thank you so much. Have a great day and happy parenting. Take that out.